You're like glowing. <laughs> if you're getting them, I'm getting them. <laughs> Hi, hello, and welcome to The Bookish Life. I'm Jess. And I'm Tori. In today's episode, Long we're talking awaited. Frida. We're talking Frida, baby. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you bought the book. I was at that Anna Huang event at Barnes & Noble and I was like, I want to buy some books because I got the striker and I had like an hour and a half to walk around. And look, it's cool. Look at it. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it from where you are. But why do you own that book? Well, I guess I bought it before I read it, which I know not to do. I genuinely thought I was going to love this book because and I want to start out if you're ignoring me by texting while we're talking it's fine I was texting Brandon about dinner sorry about what to put the oven on because he won't remember I thought we could start by saying our experience with thrillers before people come at us and say like "Mm, you're romance readers you can't talk about thrillers because they've done that what is your experience with thrillers I have none have you never read a single thriller before I don't think so okay the only one I made was the oh my gosh what is her name Alexandra Torre, Alexandra. Mm-hmm. Oh, the girl in 60. Yes. Okay. That is like the, and I read, it's like a novella. Like I read the version that's like a novella. Oh, you did. Yes. Because I have the Cause actual I, like hardback of it. Yeah. It's, and it's a like book. a full length book now. I thought you had said that. Like you read it and it was like not the full. Yeah. Thing. And like, I thought it was fine, but it was a novella. So I feel like I didn't get like the full experience of it. Okay. But besides I've that. dabbled in thrillers. So I really like, I, I talked about this in my wrap up. I like No Exit by Taylor Adams. That's like one of my favorite thrillers. And I think, I don't remember, is it They Never Learn? I need to, I need to look up my other favorite one. So I've read like Riley Sager. Um, I've read uh, Jillian Flynn. Like I've read, I've, I dabble in thrillers. Okay. So I know. Okay. I, it might be they never learn. I gave that four stars. Um, Dabble in thrillers, mm. like okay, in a, in the total of like no. that you can remember, how many thrillers do you think you've read in total? Ah, uh, like thirty. Like I've read. Oh, okay, a good amount. Like I think I've read a lot of Riley Sagers. I used to have a lot more, and then I got rid of them. Um, I do have Taylor Adams' new one. Um, But I like as I read them, I don't keep them because I'm never going to like reread them. So I used to read definitely more years past than I have now. But okay, so going back to that, right? Why did you buy the paperback? (laughs) Because I thought, okay, listen, I really like like the reason I love Catherine's books, right? I Catherine Cowles. I love very twisty books and I love it when I'm shocked. Like that is why No X is one of my favorites because like I like it when I actually feel like in thrillers, I like to feel scared. I like to be like, oh my gosh, like what is actually going to happen? I can't do that with movies, but I can do that like with thrillers. I really like it. Um, Oh, because I read, who is the one that wrote like, oh, that was Riley Sager, Final Girls. Like they're in a cabin in the woods alone. Like I can read that. I cannot watch movies like that, but I like to feel scared and shocked when I read thrillers okay so everybody has been saying Frida's books are so twisty they're like there's a shock and then there's going to be like another shock on top of the shock right that is what everybody says about Frida this twist was dumb (laughs) like oh we're just going right in okay that's fine (laughs) okay well so like that's what I'm saying like I feel like I was a little bit more critical on this because I have my expectations were so high because she is like queen of thrillers right now and people are obsessed with her right I mean yes the boyfriend is number one in the Kindle store right now and she has a couple other books I mean like yes but every single time we do a top Amazon top 100 Amazon right how many of her books it's three to five consistently in the top 100 no matter what yes so I also not that I had high expectations I just I I didn't I don't well yes but I didn't have like any I I don't have anything to compare it to I actually forgot about the A Tory I think okay. I, it was when she had that it's just her initial yeah um I actually forgot about Aeratory. that until just now yeah oh that's yes that's what it is but besides that like I literally had nothing to go off of I just was going off of like the romantic suspense books I previously read like bourbon and lies Catherine Cowles's books um which this is beginnings. very different from romantic suspense it is yes yes 
And like, we're not complaining because there's no romance. Like, I know going oh, into no. thrillers, there's not going to be romance. So I rate it as a thriller, not a romance. Yeah, like, I go into historical fiction Correct. not expecting a romance. I mean, I hope, obviously, like, I always hope for romance Plus, because I'm but, a, but that's, I don't rate it based on that. I didn't have anything, like, any expectations. I, I literally was like, let's go in. She's the best of the best. Like, I will say, I'm gonna start I have here. Goodreads pulled up. It has 190,000 ratings with an average of 4.06. So, like, collectively, people love this book. I would say, right? But why? Four- okay, so <laughs> we'll get it. <laughs> Uh, if you cannot tell, neither one of us really enjoyed this. Um, yes. Starting from the beginning, and you didn't notice this as much because I believe you listened to this on audio, correct? So I yeah. read the first half ebook. I didn't even read my physical copy that I had because I was reading on my Kindle. I read the, <laughs> the first half ebook and then <laughs> the second half on audio because it's in KU and the audio is on Hoopla. So, like, should I have bought this? No, I should honestly go and return it. But I never return books to Barnes Noble. Um, and it has like fun text messages inside so I was like oh that fun anyways so when I started I was very thrown off by the writing style which you said you noticed after I said something right yeah I just feel feel audio wise I didn't notice it yeah it's smoother and I didn't notice it until you asked me like have you noticed this and I was like you know what actually now that I think back on it It's a lot more obvious reading it physically that it's a very, I don't want to say choppy, but just very simple, like short sentences and the character like takes you out of the story quite often by like commenting on things. You can explain it because you notice it too. Okay. So I, okay, not, this is not like a bash or anything like this. I want to say this right off the bat, but I I'm someone who I tried to write a book, right? Years and years and years ago. I was like, I have this idea. I'm going to sit down and write it, okay? And I had Brandon read it. Brandon is my husband. He's very brutally honest, okay? I read like, like, I read like three chapters. <laughs> Did he he said, you write the way you talk. And I said, what hmm. do you mean? And he said, it's very short, precise, simplistic. It's very, you did this, this happened that happened this ha- and it, that reminds me of Frida McFadden's writing is it's very simplistic it's very she probably talks that way she's probably having a conversation in her head and she's writing it down like it's exactly how if she was telling the story to someone mm-hmm. this is how she would tell it like if she physically sat down and was I like, like I have this idea let me start from the beginning and I'm going to tell my story now I compare that to you know you have I mean, this is not a thriller, but like the um, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, when she is telling the story and the person who's interviewing her is one of the the main characters and she's writing it down and telling the story, it doesn't feel that way. Mm-mm. It's actually like more written out with, with inner thoughts. And yeah. yeah, what I'm going to this place instead of I went home, I walked down the hallway, then I turned right, then I turned left and then it was that like. It's not like that. It's very just like I walked through the hallway. Right. So what does the hallway look like? We had talked about how it felt so much was telling us these things were happening instead of showing it. Not even just like the physical things they were doing, but like the relationships, the past that they had. Like there was zero world building. And like you don't really think about world building in like contemporary books because like we talk about world building and like fantasy but like you have a world in your contemporary world you have these characters and their relationships and like a lot of this book relied on her relationships with people because something happens to some people she's friends with and I was like who was this person were they really friends like I didn't even know like feel that friendship until it was like she's like I'm just so sad like this happened to them and I was like are you though like did you even know them like there was not a lot of development of any of the relationships either yeah so like I mean not that I compare it to like I mean, I say romance because I primarily primarily read romance, but I also read like fantasy and historical fiction and stuff like that. And every single one of those books, there is some type of development in the world that they create or in the world that they're Mm -hmm. telling the story in. So like, yes, I know what Paris looks like. Right. But what does Paris look like in 1930? They have to be descriptive with that. And like 
I know this romance is set in a small town, but what does a small town look like? Like, you have to, like, build it out at least a little bit. Like, it's very... There, there was no... Like, I felt like it was simplistic in the way that, like, in this book, it was their apartment building, the place she went on a date, the yeah. police station. I was trying to even think, like, what city does this take place in? Is it a city? That's it. I mean, that's how I saw it. I thought it was actually New York City, but I could be totally wrong. I could be, I could be making okay. that up. Because, yeah, I was, like, literally, like, her apartment, his apartment, their dates. Yeah, and she was at a restaurant. Yeah. The, outside of her apartment. That was it. Like, that's all. Yeah. Well, there was so, no in-between. <laughs> we did talk, like, sometimes, like, a more simple writing can work for authors because it, their books are just so easy to read. Like, I can just, like, binge this whole book. And I feel like a lot of Frida's books are like that, where people will literally just, like, binge them in one sitting. And it's, like, really easy to get into. But, like, I like more to my books than reading it and thinking, like, well, I, like, again, not in a bad way because, like, I did write a lot growing up and, like, I had a minor in, in, like, writing and, like, I wanted to write for a long time. Like, I feel like I could have written this, like, in the style that she wrote. Yeah, and maybe it's a choice. Like, maybe this is her style of choice. This is what works for her. Maybe this is why she can pump out so many fucking books. Do you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) maybe her simplistic way of writing may be a style choice, and that's totally fine because it was very easy for me to pop in the audiobook and just, I think it was like two days, like two things I was doing where where I could, yeah, where I could listen to an audiobook. And like, it's not that it's a bad thing, but it's not also, it's like a good thing. And I just expected like Frida is such this and maybe she's been hyped up in my mind and maybe that's why I was so disappointed. But like if she's like the best thriller writer, right, I expect a very well-rounded book. I expect a good twist. I expect a good like I should feel something for one of the characters. I did not give a fuck about this female she character. was so dumb. <laughs> Like, it, yeah, it's like one of those like movies where you watch and they're like, I just heard something in the basement. We should go look. And I'm like, uh, really? And like, so that's what it felt like in here. Like she was not making smart decisions at all. So like and I wasn't scared ever. Like you said you were a little scared of like one scene in his apartment. Oh, that was not like scared as in like, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> Like I, I can't I can't listen to this book anymore I was gonna say read this book anymore but listen to it anymore it was like a oh shit situation where I was like this bitch is about yeah. to die that was like I was scared for the character oh, okay. not like me no, being scared I was, like, well, I was a little dumb. anxious like <laughs> no no I was anxious because I was okay. like oh she's gotten herself into a situation yeah, where I don't know if she's gonna get out alive type oh, of a thing fault. like yeah well yes it was well and like so there we are gonna get a little spoilery I mean, we're going to talk about the twist anyway, so, like, we will be getting into yeah. spoilers. So, like, the scene where they sleep together for the first time, like, <laughs> he's being weird. Like, red flags. He's got an extra phone. Like, she's like, I texted you. And he's like, well, I didn't see it or whatever. Like, you know, the whole scene where she was like, well, I just, why don't I just text you right now and, like, see if it goes through? He's like, no. So, like, he obviously has a fake phone. He's obviously hiding things. And then all of a sudden, she cuts herself. And then he's like, oh, my God. And, like, basically attacks her and they have sex. And she's like, he could basically, like, be a sex worker. He's so good. And I was like, first of all, like, weird. <laughs> Like, that's crazy. Yeah, like, there was, were some really... Yeah. And you mentioned something about, like, how she talked about romance novels, too. So there was At just, the like, very some beginning. cringe yeah. things. And then... Well, but I'm just like, this man is literally a walking red flag. Like, so obviously, he's up to no good. It was him that was a walking red flag that I was like, yeah. ew. Ew. I didn't yeah. like that. The way she talked about romance books at the beginning, she was talking about something. She was like, oh, if this was like a romance book, he would just like drag me in and take my shirt off and like ravish me. And I was like, that's <laughs> not really how romance books work. But OK. And then number three was the way she talked about her quote unquote friends. She like commented on their weight. So oh, I didn't much. notice that. But her did. weight, their yeah. weight, like comparing herself. And I was like, you need to yeah. not think that way. Like that is all self-harm like behavior type thing like mental no but it was more so like just bizarre things where I was like wait this is this is like the top of the top thrillers like what is this what other genres are besides romance because I don't like this (laughs) I've I've read thrillers that are so good but what I was waiting for was the twist so I was waiting because like 
And I do feel like that sometimes ruins a book for you if you like hear about the twist and you're like waiting for it and it just doesn't yeah. pack the punch as it should. But like so my theory when I was reading this was that the boyfriend was actually his friend in the past. And so I thought and that the creepy guy that she went on a date with was actually the guy's perspective from the past. So like they kind of like swapped roles is what I thought was going to happen. That's very deep for this type of book. Like, (laughs) well, so I was like, it's got to be something twisty and like cool. And I was like, that would be fun. Like he was like the creepy friend, but like he ended up being like turned into like this hot guy who could like take people and like do whatever. Um, You had a different, what did you, you thought that the killer was his friend in the past. Which I thought was like a, a, too, a little too obvious. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, I don't remember. Even when names, I read but... romantic suspense books, I never guess the, the person. Yeah, I'm usually wrong. Who doesn't ever. So like I was just throwing shit like out there and just seeing if it hit type of a thing. So I thought like because we were getting the past perspective of the two the guys, right? Yeah. Him, Slug, who was his friend, oh, and yeah, then Slug. him. So I thought that the killer was Slug slug the friend was something where like something I, it's, I forgot what it was how i phrased it exactly but like slug was in love with the young like they were a couple and he was like killing all the women that he that ever he had like a, so you were yes. kind of kind of right kind of yeah because it, but it, I, did, it I mean being, i just thought it was yeah yeah daisy isn't her name daisy i don't know what the fuck her a girlfriend which like the twist, I was like, okay, like, makes sense. Like, nothing about it was, like, shocking. Like, I didn't guess it, but it wasn't shocking. I was like, okay, yeah. like, yeah. Was, so, like, so he, she was killing everybody who was dating because she was jealous. Like, makes sense. Yeah. 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 I can see that. So, like, it was a surprise, but not surprising. I was expecting something to, like, blow, like, it was actually the cop the whole time. Like, her dad. Like, I would have been like, holy crap, like... What? Yeah, I thought like, the I thought the cop like was the killer. Okay. For the longest time until yeah. I forgot there was something when I was listening to the book where I was like, "Oh no, it's not him." Mm. Like I suspect everyone and then like it's a process you, of like kind of like dwindle it down. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then like where I think what really got us because we finished almost exactly at the same time and then we called each other when we were done was the fact that they just like <laughs> ride off into the sunset together and like we're like what <laughs> like so they've what? gone this whole what? fucking time right you have this psycho bitch that's like killing everyone that jake is date it's jake right i have no idea the cop the cop that was the young the cop the detective he was the one banging on the door and was oh, like you're in danger her boyfriend her ex. When they were younger, yes. What cop? <sighs> the cop in okay. here is her ex. The main character, yes. But it's also when they were younger, like you get the past perspective. Yeah. That cop is the, the guy. The Where only cop found, in the past right? is her dad. Wait, what? What what cop in the past are you talking about? No, no, no. The, the, okay, so you know how we get the two, the guys, pers- the young kids perspective? Yeah. Him. The boyfriend and Slug. Yes. The boyfriend's not a cop. N- and now he is, right? No. So what happened to him? The cop in the present is her ex that, like, kept on checking up on her. Yes. And she's dating him now. Yes. I'm talking about the other couple. The psycho crazy girl. Yeah, he's not a cop. He's a doctor. Remember, he works with dead bodies because he can't trust himself to work with, like, humans. Oh! Yeah. Yes. And he wanted to be yes. a doctor. Yeah. So there is a cop in the present. And, like, they broke up because he was, like, being annoying. And then he kept on coming around, like, are you okay? I want to make sure you're okay. And, like, checking yes. on her. So now she's with him and dating him. But he knew the psycho crazy person. No. I thought he knew her. No. He 
Mm, unless I missed oh, it. Oh, the person, the person banging on the door was the autopsy guy. He was the doctor who did all the autopsies. And that's why they were able to get away with all the killings. He was covering for her. They, them two ran off into the sunset together too. Yeah, but I didn't think he was covering for her unless I missed that. It mentioned something that's like previous. I don't know if it was like actively covering for her, but he okay. previously did. And he was like, how many more okay. times can I keep doing this to you? Okay, well, I got them confused. Okay. Because there then was also, a lot of characters yeah. that didn't have a lot of like backstory. Defining but their names qualities. were basic <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> and I read this book like two or three weeks ago. Okay. So. Um, right. Well, and like... They made it, like, out that they were going to turn into these, like, vigilantes who were only, like, murdering bad people. So that's why he murdered the creepy guy that she was dating, right? That, like, she dated in the beginning. Like, he ended up dying. And then he was like, you're welcome. And then she kind of was like, oh, my gosh, he, like, killed him for me. And I was like, this is bizarre. Yeah, because he sent her a letter that was like, yeah, you don't have to worry about Kevin. Kevin, Kevin. yes. You don't have to worry about Kevin anymore. And I was like, yeah. if I got a letter from someone like that, I'd be like, police help me. What the fuck is happening right now? Yeah. So I don't know. I like I just felt like bizarre rather than like shocking twist. I was like, this is a choice. <laughs> like And I think that's why like I personally rated it like two, two and a half stars. Yeah. Well, and it just felt so far fetched. Like I was like, this just feels very I don't like dramatic. I don't know what word I want to use, but it feels very over the top kind of like butcher and blackbird was like not but not that one did it fine because it did it in like a rom-com way but this is like a rom-com thriller like it kind of like poked fun at itself which i didn't expect e- yes that's i don't know it. how okay, to word so, but not like a rom-com i don't know what word to use to describe that no but that does make sense like over dramatized of things going on like butcher and blackbird it worked because they are serial killer vigilantes and they're literally psycho like you know that right from the beginning like both characters like they got something you know what i mean so it's like funny the way that they banter it's funny that the way their humor is it's just the whole thing is like funny with dark humor not rom-com like it's more like dark humor but this wasn't even like dark humor like i don't even know this this wasn't that i don't know what this was but it was like she was over dramatic, trying to figure this out. She took on this, like, I'm going to figure out what happened to my friend. But at the same time, this friend wasn't really her friend because she really didn't know anything about her. And then, like, she's like, but she's yeah. my best friend. But also, she didn't know anything about her life. Like, Well, yeah. And then, like, he didn't know that he was had dated her best friend. Like, he didn't even know that like, they were best live friends. In the, you live in the same fucking building, bro. Like, <laughs> I know. You, can't, you didn't. So it was just, like, over dramatized for no reason. Like. Yeah. Maybe, like, as an attempt of shock value, but it wasn't. No, like, they drew it out with, like, this, I thought this was going to be this epic shock, and, like, yeah, the twist was fine. It was like, oh, shit, okay, it was a woman. Okay, got it, and you see how she plays into it. I definitely was not expecting that, like, how she was younger, and she actually was the one that was, like, Uh, yeah, you know, doing all that stuff. and and murdered slug. (laughs) Yeah, and murdered Slug. That was a surprise. Her murdering Slug. I was like, oh. I thought, I literally thought Slug was the one doing it all. And when they were younger, I was like, Slug, come on, man. But then he, yeah. Anyway, so like, I thought that was like shocked. And I was like, oh. Okay, cool. But But then he just got stupid. He did hook up with the girl that died in the past. So like, he was cheating on Daisy. Yes. So I was like, you're trash anyways. Like... And so then but, that's why I thought he it kind of like tried to hint what is her name? Yeah, it is Daisy. Like hint that like he actually was connected to all the people that were dying and then like murdering his father and like being obsessed with blood. But it just so happens that he was but then I like kind of didn't understand like him and Daisy like broke up, but she was still obsessed with him. Yeah, it seems like he was like finally like, No, I can't do this anymore. Like you're psycho. I know what you're doing is wrong. I know the thoughts I have are wrong. So we got to separate. Know, but like, then and then she's like, still oh, blackmailed see each him. other for a while. But then she still like killed everybody he was dating. So I don't know if it would have been like cooler if it was like from his perspective. I don't know. I just didn't like the heroine's perspective. Like from her, I just didn't care for the story. It was, I don't know if all thrillers are like this. So I feel like I shouldn't have started with this one. Honestly, I really shouldn't. But it's like it tried to lead you like away from what actually was going on but like in a really shitty way 
you know, like it planted a seed that was like, oh, go this way, suspect this person. And then, oh, I'm going to drop this little hint in the book and you can suspect this person and that person. Right. And it was doing that. And I could see what she was doing, writing it. But I was like, this is still dumb. Like you're you're over you're playing it up way too much. Like you're doing too much for a very simplistic world and like characters. Yeah. Like it's not that deep. <laughs> like I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I never want to read a thriller again in my life. I really like thrillers though. Like when I read them, I do enjoy them, but I'm f- I I do feel like I'm pickier with thrillers. And I feel like thrillers are usually pretty polarizing. Like people either really love them or really hate them. The ones that are popular. Um, and I mean, like I for this one, I just pulled it up. There's two star, five star, two star, four star, three star, three star, four star, four star, two star, four star, three star, five star, two star. Like it, the reviews are all over the place, though they are consistently positive. But I think it's I really think it's one of those things where like the twist and stuff can like make or break a book, especially with thrillers. Like if you don't do it well. Someone said she in fast fashion, Frida. <laughs> fast for she does churn oh, out man. books. Yeah, I will say Cheryl, who is one of our friends, um, when she saw that I read this on Instagram, she was like, this was awful. I don't understand what happened. I guess she Cheryl has read Frida like a lot of yeah. her books. So go ahead no i was just gonna say i thought it was funny that even she was like this was trash i know so a lot of people love the housemaid which is gonna be made into a movie like that is the one that people really love i think it's funny but this now review I'm like, though uh, now i'm like but should that should that book be made into a movie like i'm very like, i think that now. one's much more popular um but this says um this person who's read her a lot says of course she's gonna hone in and harp on things that have absolutely nothing to do with the plot i couldn't bear hearing about her being able to have a child after mid-30s flabby arms and nosebleeds any longer (laughs) which i'm like okay but that was true she did talk about those all like her mother was like you know they had this woman that was 80 years old that had a child i'm like i get that you may be trying to be like realistic in like what a 30 year old made a single 30 year old woman might deal with felt so like a cringe like yeah not a fleshed out character like i'm gonna put these stereotypes in this character yeah it's like she had the twist of the story right she's like i'm gonna have this character do this to this character and let me build the story backwards like, to be honest, the detective cop person, he was actually more intriguing to me than she was. Like, I literally FaceTimed Jess and I was like, that was dumb. <sighs> that twist was dumb. But then I'm like, do people really, like, who don't read romance, do they really think, like, people just, like, ride off into the sunset together? Like, the two people that are crazy are going to go off and do crazy things and be, like, vigilantes or whatever. Uh, but, like, we've read books with that before that, like, do it well. So. Yeah. Like Butcher and Blackbird. Yeah, but even like them two and the de- like the detective finally getting back together, I was like, look, I get it. Like he is in love with his job, and at the time he was probably all about it. And now he realized, you know, what he lost, and I get. But like, okay, I like you don't get any backstory. Like I don't feel bad for you that you guys broke up, like because yeah. I didn't get anything about that. Like other than telling me that he was always working, I didn't see your emotions about that. It was just told to me that you didn't like it that he worked so much. So this might, and it might be just the book we read, because someone did say thrill, Frida is their favorite thriller author, but they gave this one star because they felt like it was rushed. And I found myself noticing short sentences that tried to sum up something much more broad, which is exactly what we said. And there's a reoccurring pattern in her books of weak female <laughs> characters that um, make painfully obvious dumb decisions. Yeah, it seems like cringe. Yeah. I don't know if I will ever read a thriller. Or I don't know if I will ever read a Frida McFadden book again. I was like, no thrillers ever? I mean, I'm not super... I mean, I feel like I did it with the wrong one. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we picked the wrong one. Like, we would have picked a different Frida book, but this one just so happened to come out in October. It was her brand new one, so... Yeah, and I'm like, this is this bitch is not, this is not good. <laughs> Let us know if you have a favorite Frida that you think we would like. I'm assuming the housemaid... Are we trying another Frida? <laughs> I feel I like I will I need, try. I need to read I it before try. the movie comes out. 
Oh, yes, I will definitely do that. I do. If there's any movie or like book to TV adaptation or movie adaptation, I will always try and read whatever the book is before watching it. I've always done that. Mm-hmm. But I want to try like a Riley Saker. Like what are the other like bigger thriller people? There's Frida. There's Riley. Mm-hmm. Um, Megan Miranda. Never heard of her. Karen Slaughter. I'm looking at my like few thrillers. I have oh, I have heard of Karen Slaughter. Karen okay. Slaughter's dark. Doesn't she have that. a pen name? No. I thought she had a romance pen name. No. Not okay, that I know of. Um, I mean, Grady Hendrix is more horror. That's the other one I have her there. There's Alice Feeney. I mean, Maybe I'll a do a Karen. Wait, when you say Karen Slaughter and you say dark, do you mean like gory? Yeah. Oh. I Sherry like Lapina is a popular one. Geneva Rose never, is popular. I've never heard of these people. Liv Constantine wrote. Is Stephen King thriller or horror? horror. Oh, see, I don't do horror. Oh, horror? Lucy Foley. Oh, yeah. I've heard of her. What? Nothing. Oh, Lisa Jewell is another one. Ruth Ware. Oh, wait. Didn't you get a Lisa Jewell book at Book Bonanza one year? Was that you? They were giving away book, but Lisa Jewell. 2022? No. 2023. 2023. Yeah, they were giving read Lisa Jules. You, Riley Sager. I've read Ruth Ware. I've read Ruth Ware. I've heard of. Oh, Caroline Kepnes wrote you. Alex Michaelides. I just said Lisa Jewell. Mary Kubica. I can't even pronounce half of these names. Kubica. Yeah. I mean, like, maybe I'll try another thriller. I, I won't try it Frida for a little while. <laughs> I want to read other ones first and see if this is like a generalized thriller thing that I don't like or if it's just a Frida thing. <laughs> yeah. Because, the, I mean, like, just just like in every single genre, there are authors that do not work for me that other people absolutely love and adore. I don't know. And I feel like sometimes it could be just be like the book you pick up by the author. Because, like, with I feel like with Frida, it sounded like there are people that love her books that, like, this one wasn't one that they liked. So. That was like a dud. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, like, if this is such a, I, I wonder on Goodreads, I'm going to go look it up, though, like, her other books. Mm-hmm. How many ratings they have versus like, oh, like the average rating? A ton. Well, and this one recently came out and has so many ratings. So, but the housemaid oh, yes. has, if this loads, 1.6 million ratings and a 4.3 average. That is insane. Oh, damn. That is insane. Damn, like legit. That's like huge. I know, but like the first ratings I see are one, two, three, and five. So yeah, that's why I'm like, what is happening in the world? Well, that's Frida for you. That was our. Th- everyone's been asking. You know what? Oh, I don't know if this to make anybody happy, but <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna make you mad or we happy. But this is our thoughts on Frida. So when I talk shit about Frida being the top one hundred. I can actually do it now because I read one of her books and it was not good. And I like thrillers, so this one was just not for me. I'll definitely try more, just not this one. Yeah. Not Frida. I'll, I'll, I'll give me some time and space. I'll come back to her. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating. Tell us what you thought of the podcast or this episode and or this episode. What is the emoji? Is there a tie for the cover? I think there's just a bow tie. I always have to look. I'm like, what are emojis? I use the same like five and that's it. <laughs> Is there a tie? I typed in bow. Um, There's a collared shirt with a tie. I feel like we used a knife recently though. Yeah, I thought we used that for something. Do they have blood? There's a blood yeah, drop. There's the- yeah, we'll do the blood drop so it matches the, the cover. Cause you're so like enamored with the blood drops on the cover it's of the book. It's so cute. Look at it. Just yeah, like, too bad it's a shitty ass book. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed a bookish life and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.